So here, the ID Tech X show. There's the. This is the new Model X, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, what's the what's the impact of what Elon Musk has been doing with the Tesla? What do you think about it? Well, he's scared the living daylights out of the car industry. That's for certain. He's created the iconic S, which will go down as one of the classic cars. And uh, this one is following that. This is the X, and uh, obviously the larger SUV, uh, not as famous. Um, have you tried to drive around in the no, Tesla? No, I haven't been in it. No, I haven't. I haven't, S? I haven't driven it, but uh, no, you don't need to. It's obvious that uh, uh, they they have excellent ride. They're very quiet. Uh, they are the near to the ultimate ecological product, product, but they've got a long way to go in terms of improvement. And uh, Elon Musk has been very clear about this. He said that the skin of this type of car will be uh, solar. It's going to be a solar car, uh, at least in part. So we're, we're looking at something that's going to change uh, very rapidly. Tesla is able to improve its products faster than many competitors. And frankly, we, as I said in my talk in this event here, um, we're in an area of extreme melodrama. In the next 15 years, we'll, we're going to reach peak of uh, cars themselves and peak lead acid batteries and peak of diesel and many other things. And along come the pure electric. And let's, this is part let's of it. Sit in, in there while we talk about it a little bit more. Um, like, in terms of impact on the industry and and kind of like surprising everybody when when Elon Musk started talking about this not so many people thought he would actually be shipping that many right no I think that's true and uh, a cynic would say that he's managed to ship them only by selling them at a massive loss and the competing car companies feel that they uh, wouldn't have got away with some of the quality problems in the early years but I think uh, the basic message is very sound from Tesla and that Tesla uh, is probably most vindicated by the fact that just recently, only in the last few months, we've seen uh, a situation where both Daimler and Toyota have said they're effectively going to set up Tesla-like activities uh, where they're going to uh, invest most of their money on pure electric vehicles. What you're looking at is a pure electric vehicle. Uh, yes, an enormous car like this is not, as you might say, fully environmental, but you have to do what people want. And as there are ever bigger speed bumps in towns and uh, ever bigger uh, traffic around you, uh, particularly the ladies, they love these big SUVs. And so we have to reflect that. Tesla has to reflect that. So do the other manufacturers. And uh, so Tesla has got a very sound strategy in our view. There, there are issues, obviously, with uh, learning to get the cost out of these products and make money, obviously there are issues with that. But basically the strategy is sound and it's validated by a lot of the giants starting to follow Tesla. And in fact, the ones that don't go a bundle into pure electric, they're going to have a problem. Uh, there are going to be some spectacular bankruptcies, I suspect, in the next uh, 10 to 15 years in the automotive industry because it, it is oversupplied and a number of the, s the suppliers, a number of the manufacturers are really in denial about this sort of thing. They're doing only token things and it's going to be too little and too late for a number of them. So it's very interesting. So here we have, look, dear me, this is a computer in a car. There isn't a dashboard anymore. We're looking at something that's uh, 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 enormously functional. And that is something the others are doing, uh, not to quite the extent, um, but Tesla is also um, taking a lead. Uh, it, it may or may not succeed in everything. It's not, uh, it's, uh, Elon Musk hasn't got magical powers, um, but they're having, taking a lead with um, having uh, a move towards autonomy uh, where they don't even use the LiDAR, which is typically the most expensive product. But as BMW has said, all the hardware components in autonomous cars, uh, Tesla included, are going to be commoditized. They're going to get cheaper and cheaper. So uh, basically they're able somehow, magically, to do self-driving uh, just using cameras. It's just camera technology. No, no, sonar and... Uh, 
uh, all so manner of technologies are used, uh, but the, uh, as with so many things in life, we're moving from lumps of metal to electronics and electrics, and we're moving from electronics and electrics to software and services and added value. So autonomy is going to be largely an exercise in uh, earning money from enormous amounts of uh, software and services. And uh, so the industry is being transformed, just as we all know the old story that uh, it's moving towards ride sharing. And uh, what's the ultimate ride sharing? It's called a bus. We had it all along. Well, Tesla's going to make a bus and it says it's going to reinvent the bus so that you can have buses that don't hold up the traffic, uh, that can be boarded in, in an instant without a uh, gangway down the middle and it'll be interesting to see what they do but in the meantime Hyundai has just uh, launched its first bus as a pure electric bus because the bus market's going to be as big as the car market as the cities of the world are going to move to a situation where they uh, are going to ban uh, cars whether they are autonomous or not because private cars uh, grab over 10% of the land area of a city and um, that means that they uh, uh, can't be tolerated a, a lot longer private cars because they're only about 3% utilised and they uh, clag up the streets, they cause a lot of the traffic jams. So there are lots of alternatives but um, the brighter companies like Tesla are very well aware of this and they're looking at all forms of, uh, all, all sorts of other radical forms of transport and Elon Musk's even got his eye on electric aircraft and he's even said that as the batteries improve even more uh, we're going to have electric aircraft that can go intercontinental and I think together with solar power that's going to be true I think he's absolutely right the man's certainly ahead of the game in most respects love him or hate him he's he's one of the uh, pivotal figures just like Eisenbard Kingdom Brunel in the last century uh, uh, century before last and uh, uh, Edison in the last century and so on. So he's, uh, he's up there with those and the things he's doing are truly heroic and uh, very impressive and it's validated by so many of the traditional companies belatedly copying him. This one guy uh, using his money well to do amazing stuff. I, I think he's using other people's oh. money well. Okay, <laughs> but he did have large some. Amount of he other. did he have had some. some and yes, he's he been did. able to convince people to use money to do he awesome things. He did have things. enormous courage with his own money uh, that he made out of other enterprises that he did uh, that were very successful indeed. So he's not the only one and there are very imaginative things being done by uh, the competitors and it, the race is on. So it, The Model 3 is so many pre-orders. It's amazing. Uh, Are they going to be yes. able to ship so many and it's cheaper? Yes. Uh, I, I think I'd be slightly cautious in that, yes, it proved that people can be persuaded in very large numbers to buy pure electric cars, which is what most traditional manufacturers said would not happen or it was not ready to happen for a very long time, for decades. He proved that was wrong. But he effectively did it at an enormous trading loss with investors that are investing money at an enormous rate and he knows that um, it'll be a pyrrhic victory unless he does fabulous cost reduction and they've got their teeth into that right now so we shall see the jury is out awesome and uh, there's gonna be all this stuff about uh, the self-driving is gonna turn your Tesla into a self-driving uber kind of device uh, like you go to yes, your work I, and then I, you let it pay for I, itself I think this sort of product and variants on this uh, um, there are a lot of ones more boxy looking than this that are being worked on and they're a bit of a merger of a taxi and a bus uh, and in fact you already have the so-called MIDI buses in China and these MIDI buses uh, they've got about six million of them they're building them up to about 10 million they'll be making about a million of them a year and they take 20 to 40 people and uh, that sort of thing is going to become to some extent a merger of a bus and a taxi i think they may even alternate between on demand and working to a route and there's going to be a reinvention of transport so yes there's elon musk's hyperloop and all the really space age stuff but there are some more prosaic things being looked at and uh, we're moving to a world where I mentioned photovoltaic solar over the whole vehicle. That's even going to be the windows. We have a report on uh, solar windows and they're getting a lot of uh, 
adoption now in buildings, uh, they're going to be adopted uh, after that in cars. We're going to make electricity from the movement of the wheels. We're going to make electricity from so many things you wouldn't believe it as we progress towards independence where we don't need all those ugly charging stations. But it's going to take time. That's a 20-year uh, thing. There are other things happening within the 10 years. But the exciting thing is that for all these companies there's a route map to all manner of improvements that can cause tremendous advances. This is only the beginning. And I, I was hoping that they would have battery swapping technology as a, a default way to extend your range. So there would be a whole bunch of battery swap stations. But uh, you say that that would be too costly, right? Because let's, turn it too on many... its, let's turn it on its head. Batteries cost up to 55% of a pure electric vehicle. Uh, do you want to have, of those hideously expensive things, extra ones sitting around by the roadside, not just a few, because every car has a different shape, you've got to have all of them. It's ridiculous. So Better Place went under uh, because it thought it could stock, say, the six favourite ones, but of course it was too early, there weren't enough vehicles on the road. And if you put in robot changing of batteries at the roadside, you need a million dollars, two million dollars, it's like the terrible expense of um, hydrogen fueling, refueling for the fuel cells. So I think money and infrastructure and the devil's in the detail does catch some of these things and we're really going to, in my opinion, uh, we're going to see uh, a number of other routes pursued, um, but battery swapping could work with a fleet of all identical uh, taxes maybe, but probably not because they go place to place, they don't go back to depot. Uh, maybe some buses, it is done by a company Alais in Taiwan with buses, uh, but it hasn't been enormously popular. So I think at the end of the day, the devil's in the detail, the batteries cost an awful lot, what you really don't want to keep far more than you have. You also don't want to buy, look at this gorgeous car, you buy that, would you like to go to the local gas station when you want to have more uh, power behind you and uh, they swap it for a rusty one. Would you be a happy bunny or a sad bunny? I'd be a sad one. So, you so think there might are take issues to address. There are issues to address and I don't think battery swapping is the answer uh, myself. But you think it might take 20 years for uh, electric cars to take over everything? Um, Could it happen sooner? Yes. Well, um, in the industry, uh, most of us believe that even in 10 years from now, the majority of new cars, let alone the ones out there, will be made uh, without being totally pure electric. So the industry moves pretty slowly, it's speeding up now. Uh, but we always take out of our pocket this. And this is something where we all said uh, we didn't want it, it would cost 10 times as much, and we'll stick with the old button phone. And then we all got our iPad, we all got our Samsung. And it happened, it seemed almost overnight, didn't it? So I think the pundits, including ourselves, do sometimes get it wrong. We're, all we can do is reflect all the new inputs and things coming out, but uh, there is quite a bit of evidence of a tipping point beginning with pure electric vehicles. Some of the huge, massive uh, $20 billion suppliers of parts are betting uh, on just those by disposing of all their other activities, like Delphi has been uh, moving very fast to focus just on doing parts for pure electric vehicles, and Bosch is moving, looking to move in that sort of direction. So there's a sort of tipping point comes when, for instance, if you had a diesel car and you felt that in three years when you want to sell it, the sales but the resale price would be terrible because by then it will be banned from certain city centres and by then it might have certain restrictions on it and anyway the places where you can refuel it they're all shutting down and you, you might worry about these things. Realistically or falsely you may worry about these things but you have a self-fulfilling prophecy you don't buy another diesel. So diesel sales are in uh, not free fall but dropping quite fast already because of these concerns uh, because people invest quite a lot of money in their car and they want to know that it's going to have a good resale price when they sell it. And for some people that's in six years' time. So we're not quite at, a, what I say, a, a, a collapse of diesel. We're not quite at the point of a tremendous takeover by pure electric vehicles. Uh, but I think, you know, watch this space. It could happen faster than the rest, than we currently predict. I don't think it'll work come slower. 
battery technology evolves uh, fast enough to uh, increase the or decrease the range anxiety. Uh, 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 the progress in batteries or maybe uh, is it going to be another kind of battery? I think not. I think in, in, in my uh, look at this in, in considerable depth is that, that in the next um, 10 years we are going to have lithium-ion batteries. But I do think that uh, there are some risks being taken actually. The, I held up a Samsung phone, dear me, it wasn't the one that caught fire, but the Samsung phones catching fire and uh, failing uh, is always a battery problem. And that Samsung's one of the top four battery companies. It is one of the four best, and yet it can make a mistake like that. There will be mistakes like that made with the big batteries in vehicles uh, over the next 10 years, because in the race to make them smaller and cheaper, uh, they are taking some risks. They're changing in the jargon, the anode and the cathode and the electrolyte and the format. They're changing all the ways it's made and all the materials they use. And when you do that, you can't really believe the old tests and the old supplier assessments. And so some companies will do this successfully, uh, but some, I'm not sure they necessarily cause any big bangs, but some of them might say, oops, we've moved a bit too fast and batteries aren't really up to standard give us six months of not supplying anything while we sort ourselves out. I think there is a risk of that over the next 10 years. So I don't think there's any serious alternative to lithium ion batteries. Uh, and I think most people will get it right, even with this headlong pace of scaling up for dozens of gigafactories and um, also changing all the details of the device at the same time.